and Tobago. 2018 is Miss Florida Spain West. Isabel Bisnat. Well, she's no longer Miss Porta Spain West. From Sunday night, she's officially our Miss World delegate going up in to represent this country, Isabel Amara Bisnath. Well, she's a, according to this page, she's a Trinidadian lawyer, panis, beauty pageant title holder, and she won the 2018 edition of the Miss TNT competition. She's a lethal combination, and if you read the, the profile pics and you read all of the reviews, she is the lethal combination of beauty, brains, and charm. Ms. Bisnath, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Hema. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm great. Has it sunk in yet? I'm still in a little bit of shock, but as the engagements start coming in, as the media appearances continue, it's really starting to sink in that this is for real now, and this is my role, and I'm representing Trinidad and Tobago. When did you, when was there an interest in beauty pageants in your life? It certainly really wasn't when I was younger. When I was little, my parents really pushed me into academics and into my school. So growing up, I never really had too much of an interest in beauty pageants. But as a young girl and as a young woman, I was, I, I was, I was always interested in the beauty industry, in the fashion industry. I found it quite glamorous. It's also an incredible business. Mm -hmm. What people fail to appreciate about the beauty and fashion industries, both in Trinidad and Tobago and globally, is that it's a million dollar, multi-billion dollar in industry worldwide and there are so many opportunities within that for both for personal growth and for professional development. What was it in particular mm -hmm. that, is, that you decided I'm going to enter the beauty pageant this year, that I'm going to try to vie mm -hmm. for the crown? Well I had just returned to Trinidad after studying abroad and I had started working with the Ministry of Education and I was really enjoying my time being back. I was enjoying catching up with my friends and I wanted to get more involved in my local community. I had started work with a charity called For the Love of Reading, which provides free community spaces for books to be shared and donated in areas across Trinidad. And I wanted to promote that. So when I saw the casting call, I thought, okay, this sounds like a good <laughs> opportunity to do that and to also have a good time and to also work on my public speaking skills and to meet new people and to, to build up those connections again because I'd really lost them having been away for so long. You know, considering that I look at your academic qualifications, which are superbly impressive, mm -hmm. in fact, I feel like an underachiever this morning, <laughs> but what was the immediate, your immediate circle when you mm -hmm. said to them, I'm going to enter a beauty pageant, what was their immediate reaction? There was a bit of a silence, a bit of a pause, and then everyone said, okay, good job, good luck with it, we'll see how far you get. And when you started progressing and you made it into the final mm. 10, you made it into the final yeah. three, did everybody think you got this? I don't know, I think the competition was so stiff, I didn't even think that I was a sure thing to get in. All the other delegates were incredibly accomplished, talented, beautiful women, so I don't think for a second that I felt, okay, this is definitely going to happen for me, but I really hope that I really continued to try to do my best and it really paid off. You know, many people believe that beauty pageants are simply a regressive step, mm -hmm. that there is a stereotypical mm -hmm. view that you judge women based mm -hmm. on a paradigm of beauty, yes. a stereotype of beauty. How mm -hmm. do you respond to that criticism? I think that the evolution of beauty pageants over the last few decades really show that the standard of beauty has evolved and has changed. So for example, Davina Bennett, beautiful black Jamaican beauty queen with gorgeous natural hair made it into the top three of Miss Universe a couple of years ago. And Julia Morley has welcomed transgender women into the pageant. I think it fits in with the overall body positivity movement and the shift in global values towards a more inclusive standard of beauty. And I think granted, the Miss World and Miss Universe franchises still create a particular ideal of beauty, but it just goes to show that that is changing and that is evolving. In your mind, what is beauty? When I think of beauty, I think of inner beauty, that love of self, that radiance and that joy you have to be among other people and to make the world a better place. I think of beauty as making other people happy and being comfortable in yourself. You tell me that you entered this pageant mm -hmm. because you saw it as a, a means to expand your social work. Mm -hmm. On the day of the pageant itself, mm -hmm. what was that day like for you? I woke up, 
I was incredibly anxious. I couldn't even eat breakfast. I went to training. We did a full rehearsal the day of the show. And I remember I kept asking everyone, OK, which are the steps again? What do we have to do? I really, really was so anxious and so nervous. But as, soon as it got nearer to the time, I started to calm down. Everyone was incredibly supportive. The environment and the energy backstage was really wonderful. The girls were helping each other pin on their sashes. People were coming in. We were getting water. We were getting a little bit of food. It was a very calming and relaxing environment to be in. You conquered the world of academia. Mm -hmm. How difficult was it conquering the pageantry environment? It was a lot of work. What was it like? When people I... say it's a lot of work, what is it like? <laughs> well, uh, what I didn't have to work on so much was interview technique, because I've done a lot of interviews before. I've done a lot of mm, mooting and debating and public speaking. But where I really struggled was the modeling and the walking aspect. So I had to have extra walking lessons to perfect that model-esque pageant walk <laughs> in six-inch heels, which I've never worn before. All of my heels are maybe two or three inches, and I wear them to work. And I might wear them out, but that's it. So it was a totally new experience in that respect. Now, you know, now that you hold this title, your image, your style, you, you're constantly putting yourself out there to be judged. Some mm -hmm. will be critical, some will be supportive. Wh how are you dealing with this newfound fame and the attention? I think the first rule of being a public figure is never read Facebook comments, never read Instagram comments. I don't do it anymore because I want to just focus on growth and my supervisors and my trainers are very helpful with giving me the criticism and the feedback that I need to develop and improve on my weaker areas. Because I think that as a public figure, it's, it's a given that you will be judged and there will always be critics. And you need to take away the positives from that. You need to take away the growth without taking the loss of self-esteem and the constant anxiety of what other people will say. I saw one of your videos, and I know that you're fluent in a number of languages. Mm -hmm. So from that to law, how did that transition occur? Well, actually, my scholarship was in languages. Really? I love languages. Actually, I nearly didn't do law. I was really <laughs> thinking about doing literature, doing a bit of French and Spanish as a degree. And ultimately, I decided that I wanted to use law the degree of law and the profession of law as a way to empower myself and other people and to make positive change in the world. So that is why I chose to study law instead. But I went out of my way to find internships and legal experience that would have allowed me to work in different languages, which is why I did an internship in Brussels in competition law, and I was able to practice my French. And I also did an internship in Italy where I worked on my Italian. So it really tied in all together quite well in the end. In the entire pageant experience, what's the one thing that shocked you the most? The one thing that shocked me is that I found reserves of strength and resilience that I never really realized that I had. I was up about 5 o'clock in the morning every single day. I'd go to the gym, I'd go to work, I'd go to training in the evening. Sometimes I wouldn't get home until 10 or 11 at night. And I just kept on going, and I'm incredibly proud of myself for pushing myself to do my absolute best. What is your plan for the next year? Obviously, you are preparing for the pageant. What are some of the things that will change in your life? What I'm focusing on now is my Beauty with a Purpose project. I'm very excited to be partnering with the Silver Linings Home School to develop their facilities in providing education and literacy training for children who are disadvantaged in a number of ways. So that is what I'm working on full time at the moment. We're looking for a new real estate place for them. We're looking for increased teaching. We are, have so much work to do in that respect. And Trinidad and Tobago will certainly hear a lot about it from me in the coming weeks. As you prepare to represent uh, this country, let me ask you about the pageant night. Did you think that you had it in the back? You were a favorite. In fact, a few of the judges have told me you were the favorite very early. Um, oh my but gosh. Did, you, did you think that, you know what, I have it in the back? No, I really never thought that. And I think growing up that I always, you know, maybe struggle a little bit with a bit of shyness and a bit of self-doubt. So maybe that was just me, because I think a lot of people saw a lot in me that I don't think I necessarily realized. I've always just focused on doing my best. Was it difficult exposing so much of the inner you to the public? It was a little difficult at first. I think that naturally I'm a bit of more of a reserved person. And 
Uh, but I really wanted, now that I'm in the public eye, I think it's important not only to push the professional side, the serious side, the lawyer <laughs> side, and all the work that I'm doing, but also you must bring across your personality and you must show people that you're a full person that they can engage with and deal with. Otherwise, it, it comes across as a bit flat. What advice do you have for the young ladies who are now looking to Isabel and they want to be the next Isabel Bisnap? Just follow your dreams. That is my one hope for everyone. And don't be afraid to do anything. Don't pay attention to what other people say. If you sh firmly believe that you can do it and you have the strength and the determination and you're willing to put in the work, you can achieve anything. You decided for your talent piece to do mm. uh, Happiest Man Alive yes. on the piano. Yes. How difficult was that? I mean, I was blown away mm -hmm. by that choice and I thought, how great was that? Thank you very much. That piece was composed for me by Johanna Chakari Lohmeyer. She's amazing. You should check her out. <laughs> she specializes in transitioning soca pieces to classical music. Right. And I spoke to her because I really wanted to play a local piece. I, didn't, I had been classically trained and most of my pieces were along that kind of ilk. Right. But I felt that that would not sit well with me. I really, really wanted to do something that brought across the vibrancy and the rhythms of Trinidad and Tobago culture. So I chose this soca piece and it was difficult to learn because there's extra syncopation in playing a soca piece than right. there is in traditional classical music. So you really, really have to be on point with your timing, on point with your rhythm. And it was a bit challenging at first. So I had a lot of training with Alicia Allen. She's an amazing <laughs> piano coach. And in the end, I was incredibly happy with how it turned out. It was an amazing piece. I mean, I looked at it a couple of times and I thought I was pretty talented. And your fashion sense, mm -hmm. the gown was absolutely beautiful. Is it now difficult to have people coordinating your outfits and say, no, this is now? How much uh -huh. of your personal style is incorporated into your brand now? I think the organizers and the designers and the sponsors are always asking me for my opinion. That They always want to bring out the best version of me. So yes, they offer me choices, but I'm always really consulted. And I take a very strong approach in guiding my sense of style. I mean, I'm just happy to have sponsors, <laughs> to have people helping me out. So if you want to give me an outfit and you want me to wear it, yes, 100%, I will wear it. And I really believe in supporting local talent. What is the one thing people will be shocked at to know about Isabel Bisnap? I suppose it would be that, well, growing up, I was very shy. I really would always just be at home with a book. Sometimes at lunchtime, I'd be a bit too shy to talk to people, so I'd go in the library and just read instead. And it was really only a bit later, maybe around university, that I started to come out of my shell more because especially when you study abroad, yeah. you have to meet new people. You have to make an effort to put yourself out there because it can be very lonely and very isolating as an experience. And that really brought me out as a person. Well, congratulations. And I'm almost mm -hmm. certain that you will represent us amazingly. Thank in, you so much. Uh, in the competition. Isabel Bisna, check her out on Facebook, Instagram. She is the new face of TNT. And we have to represent and we have to support all of our ladies out there who are putting themselves out there. And I want to say kudos to the organizers. I mean, that was a star-studded Academy-like event and a production that mm -hmm. they put out on Sunday night in Napa. Were you surprised at the sheer grandeur of, of everything? Oh, no. I knew that the organizers had done an amazing job with our training and I knew that the show would be phenomenal. When I saw it, I thought, wow, this is real Academy style stuff. But, you know, it's about evolution. And uh, congratulations again and wish mm -hmm. you all the best. We take a